Hi and welcome to CBN 4's Prime Time News Package for this evening. I'm your presenter, Alien Christopher. First up tonight, the efforts of the Dominican people to get back on their feet following the devastating effects of Hurricane Maria have made great impression on UN Assistant Secretary General and the UN Development Program UNDP Director for Latin America and the Caribbean, Jessica Faita. Dominica was devastated by a Category 5 hurricane which struck on the night of September 18, 2017. In addition to the positive attitudes of those affected by the storm, the UNDP's regional director said the application of the help that the international community is providing to the island is visible and encouraging. Acting Prime Minister at the time and Minister for Planning, Economic Development and Investment, Honorable Dr. John Colin McIntyre, who met with Faita commented on the partnership between the UNDP and the government of Dominica. The UNDP team is assisting the government of Dominica in coordinating the crisis recovery efforts to focus on rebuilding a more resilient country. The organization has so far deployed waste management and debris removal experts in the capital of Roseau and around the island through the NEP program. UNDP has also conducted training sessions for over 300 builders who are now certified in climate resilient building practices. And Mandisa Dukri, a welfare officer and Calypsonian who has participated for the second time in the Calypso eliminations, says that she is overjoyed that she is one of those selected to take place in the quarterfinals. Mandisa said she remembers that she was not chosen in last year's competition, but that did not discourage her. Dukri, who is a female Calypsonian, says she is not at least intimidated by this male-dominated competition. Women um, in the music industry as a Calypsonian, um, and I go when I go when I perform. That's what I think about. I think I am just. Rep I am. How would I say it? I am um, making my contribution. I don't allow myself to be distracted by the you know, other competitors and so on. But it's true, it's, uh, we, sometimes we say, yes, it's a big man show. That's what it's about, it's a big man show, but I feel like I, I have a place there and I can make just as a valuable contribution. And I also get, a, I get support from the other Calypso, male Calypsonians who, you know, listen to the work that, that I produce, what I do, and, you know, give me advice, and so on. So I get support from former. Dukri explained that she has always been singing from her high school days into university. She added that Calypso is just another genre of music in which artists can voice their concerns or issues. Dukri says that as opposed to last year when she sang about a rape in the marriage, this year her song entitled Sutiwe speaks on, of parents who enable their children to partake in a wrongful activity. My song is Sutiwe. The name of it is Sutiwe. And basically talking about how we sometimes as adults enable the, uh, the negative activities of young people. Because I am a welfare officer and I'm very much familiar with, with that kind of thing that goes on in our society because I have to deliver a lot of young people who, who, who are offenders and um, you know, I have to sometimes even represent them in court and so on. So I'm very familiar with that. And the song sort of brings that out, um, some of the activities in our society with our young people and how we sort of enable them and we sometimes don't give them responsibility or let them have responsibility or own responsibility for their actions. So that's why the song is called Suti Way. And, um, but I feel the song is a world issue because if, if you hear the first line of my song, it, it states, you know, it has a world issue. Duke Rhee admits that it is nerve-wracking to at times come out and entertain the crowd. Therefore, she asked for the full support of the Calypso fans. And also making our headlines this evening, coordinator of Calypso Association, Emmanuel Salamat, has announced that two famous Calypsonians would not be participating in the 2018 Calypso competition for personal reasons. Salomon says that while the association is a bit disappointed, the Calypsonians that are not able to participate will be replaced by two very talented Calypsonians. He's an executive member 
and he informed me that he's actually the assistant secretary treasurer and he informed me that Leona Peters, that is Leona, she sings as Leona, uh, most times she, her son, Pat Aaron wrote her songs and she will not be taking part. It means effectively that Insider, who is one of the three others outside those we had chosen, we chose 12 and three, the, the free reserve, they went in automatically and we had three other people, the next in line, waiting for developments. Um, of course, two of them um, filled because I also got yesterday that um, Daddy Chess was not singing. So Son of the Saint, who was next in line, came in automatically um, for one of Wizard, one of the free Wizard Web or, or whoever. And um, Son of the um, Top of Top, this guy who of this song, this popular song called um, Former Line, he comes in for um, any one of them, he came in for Daddy Chess because Daddy Chess informed me that he wouldn't be in Dominica on the day of the quarterfinals. He'll be out of state. He admits that the elimination round of the Calypso show went well. He says that 60 Calypsonians took part in this round and 15 were chosen. He revealed the names of the Calypsonians who are going straight into the quarterfinals. Jude, Jude Dorset, Jude Delaney, JD, Stefan Subero, that is Stefan, and um, Victor Big, Comforter, Daryl Bob, D Bob, Murphy, John Drew, Sai. We had a scare yesterday because Sai made a joke that he was not singing, but he was just scaring us. <laughs> we lost our Sai. Um, Jocelyn Charles, Jamma B, he used to be Boutte. I still call him Boutte, by the way. Um, Phil, um, Lander, the healer, uh, Abdel, John Baptist, Checo, Tasha Pielte, Tasha P, son, um, daughter, daughter of Intruder, um, Chester Litter, Daddy Chess, and also um, Tasha is a former king, um, Queen, Monarch, um, Daddy Chess is Chester Litter is uh, twice, is it twice, King, Derek Senville, Logos, Davidson Victor, three times, um, King, um, Denison, Joseph, Dice, the Magnificent Dice, eight, is it eight or seven times King, <laughs> a lot of King, a hero in my eyes, um, Leona Peters who will not be there, Beno will not be there, Jenny ja Jackson will not be there because um, her dad says she'll be studying, but we, I'm sure we'll see her um, doing a guest performance on one of the shows and Webster Mari. The coordinator of the Calypso Association says that minus a few hiccups, the elimination was a blast. He commends the Calypsonians who made it through the elimination round, bearing in mind that getting through the elimination round is indeed crucial. And the Dominica Festivals Committee will host a Christmas event at the Dame Eugenia Charles Boulevard this week. The event, dubbed Embracing Christmas Tradition, will commence at 3 p.m. on Thursday, December 21st, with a musical entertainment and distribution of gifts to children. From 6 p.m. on that day, several musicians will team up to entertain the public with a variety of Christmas carols. Patrons will be serenaded with a unique repertoire of classical, jazz, reggae, swing, pop, country and Caribbean rhythms. The Honorable Minister for Tourism and Urban Renewal will be present for the traditional lighting of the Christmas tree in the city. His Excellency Desmond Blanchard, Acting President of the Commonwealth of Dominica and Mrs. Blanchard, are expected to attend the musical event. And stay tuned for more local news highlights right after this break.
and welcome back to CBN 4's Prime Time News Package. Local chainsaw operator Kelvin Laura of Poncasse says that he is advising the government and the forestry division to make use of the fallen trees. Kelvin, who has been a chainsaw operator for over 20 years, believes that Dominica produces some of the best lumber for construction work. Kelvin noted that many homes in Dominica were destroyed by Hurricane Maria. Therefore, he believes that chainsaw operators and homeowners are in need of the material that he believes will simply be left to rot. Wood that there, instead of buying, most of them people buying, going back and buying it. Then they they saw their local wood instead. They just to use their local wood to, to, to use that in, 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 the, in the forest and waste. Because all them, but them woods that fall, there's waste they go into waste. So I don't see what, what the, I, I would see what the government can do if it to, to, because there have a lot of chainsaw men that need them wood and it's going, it's going to waste. Because look all, all, all of that, that is, that is national park. I agree it's national park, but, park, but the wood that is there wasting that is going to rotten. Best, I just sell it to the chainsaw operators and, and utilize it before there is turn waste. Because I was talking to one of them forest people as that forest leader, he told me the government don't, they're going to give the people them, them, them wood. And I said, I think that, that is nonsense. Don't give it to sell it to the people and it is going to rotten. It's not to say you are going to cut it. I agree, those that is standing up can stay. But those that fall down already, well, sell them to the people and let them people utilize it for construction. Laura went on to say that he strongly advises homeowners to make use of the local hardwood rather than importing what he considers inferior material. You can use it. Like, you just, like gommier, carapid, bordeaux, blue mahu, the mahogany, barbody, and the kakarat, pipiwi, all of them. You can utilize them for, for, for construction. Laura admits that the forest trees are likely to take 20 to 30 years before they are fully grown. Therefore, he feels that the materials should be used to assist those affected by the hurricane. And in 2015, Colgate Palm Palmolive, the parent company of the Dominica Coconut Products Limited, decided to close down its operations. The property was severely affected by flooding as a result of massive rainfall associated with the passage of Tropical Storm Erica in August 2015. DCP was set to reopen before the end of 2017 as a Dominican businessman and the government of Dominica partnered and purchased the facility. However, since the passage of Hurricane Maria on September 18th, the facility was subject to more devastation. So far, there has been no indication whether or not the factory will reopen. CBN 4's Marissa Stedman has more. CP or Dominica Coconut Products, located in Lower Belfast, which has served as one of Dominica's main factory on the island, was set to reopen in January 2018. However, because of the passage of Hurricane Maria on September 18, 2017, we are uncertain whether or not the factory will reopen. Management has told CBN4 that they cannot confirm their reopening date, but they can say that the factory will reopen. CBN4 continues to watch as the story unfolds. Marissa Stedman, CBN4 News. And in other news, a closing ceremony for a Cuban chainsaw crew was recently held at the Whitey Kubuli National Trail Office in Poncase. 19 Cuban nationals who arrived on island on October 22nd to assist the utilization team of the Forestry Division with the clearing of national and ecotourism site trails were awarded certificates of appreciation for their invaluable contribution. Additionally, the members of the forestry utilization team, headed by Nigel Harvey, were also recognized for their contributions. Between the 22nd and the 27th of October, the teams conducted assessments and groundworks commenced on the 28th. Works began at the Botanical Gardens and then continued to key sites like the Emerald Pool, the Syndicate Nature Trail, the Cambridge National Park and Segment 5 of the Whitey Kubule National Trail. Works ended on December 14th and the visiting crew is scheduled to leave the island on December 22nd. The Director of Forestry, Wildlife and Parks Division, Michinton Burton, said that the division is grateful for the assistance of the Cuban government to Dominica's post-Hurricane Maria recovery activities. And Prime Minister of Dominica, Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, has stated that neither the government nor the Dominica Labour Party embroils itself in the workings and 
machinations of the opposition United Workers Party. The Prime Minister was addressing the resignation of MP for the Russo South constituency, Joshua Francis. Francis recently wrote to the United Workers Party president indicating his intention not to contest the next general election. The Member of Parliament stated in his letter that he confronts unexpected results which are deep and require his full attention. We merely take note of the announcement by Member for Rosa South. But what I would say is, in passing, however, is that pure, from purely a national perspective, in terms of what's best for Dominica, it is a tad bit unfortunate that such a letter was sent to the current political leader of that party and did not actually emanate from the individual who leads that party, the UWP. That, we believe, would have been a good thing for all of Dominica. The Prime Minister further stated that he has no recommendations for Francis. It would have been in the best interest of the country had it been Mr. Linton, the one saying that he is borrowed out of politics. The country would be better served that way. In response to a question about the Dominican Labour Party reclaiming the Roseau South seat, Skerritt said that the next general election hasn't occupied his time. I am preoccupied now with um, assisting the private sector where necessary to, to reopen their businesses, to restock, getting farmers to be back on the field and providing them with the necessary support. Uh, covering the homes of many of our senior citizens who do not have insurance and who do not have the means of covering their homes. Getting these 1,000 homes completed quickly so that we can put 1,000 families into their homes as soon as possible. Um, signing additional contracts for homes. Uh, assisting the public servants with uh, with some limited funds to recover the homes and we'll be making an announcement um, hopefully by tomorrow of the initial amounts which we will place at the aid bank and the government housing loan board at two percent um, with a six months grace period the public servants and the private sector employees to recover the homes with a maximum they can borrow fifty thousand dollars these are things that preoccupy by my mind you know um, and the many of us who still have tarpaulins of our homes. So elections are not on my, on my mind, but just to say that um, the, uh, the people have been disappointed with the representation given to my, by the Workers' Party. And not only, not only Rosa South, but the entire country. In the resignation letter of Joshua Francis, he said he will not disregard the social and moral contract with his constituents. He also indicated that his current term would be fulfilled as a parliamentarian and vowed to serve the Roseau South constituency for a full term. And that takes us to the end of the primetime news package for this evening. If you've missed any of the stories, you can catch up on cbn or on our Facebook page. Until our next broadcast, I am Alian Christopher saying thank you for watching.